<laughs> the, the boy genius not quite getting it done this year. Uh, on that uh, note, and John and I have talked about this here on the show before, need your take as well. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Uh, Eagles did make a play for Russell Wilson, inquired about him this past year. He didn't want to come here. All right, didn't get him. They did inquire about Deshaun Watson, definitely had interest in him. He wanted no part of coming. Oh, no, he didn't get him. Jalen Hurts t- turns into Jalen Hurts. That story has been well written. Eagles really wanted Allen Robinson this offseason. Yeah. And he did. ended up going to the Rams yeah. and basically doing diddly squat. Uh, Allen Robinson for over evaluated. You're going to blame it all on Stafford not being there. Why has he been a complete non factor for the defending champions? I think it could be a combination of, of those. Obviously, Matthew Stafford not being in a lineup, being in and out of the lineup. Uh, Allen Robinson, Robinson's a little bit older. But like you said, too, it, it's when you're pursuing someone, sometimes, sometimes you're going after players, oftentimes, based on what they've done in other systems, what they've done with other teams, the success they've had in the past. And you're projecting that onto what you can do or what you feel they can do with your team. And it doesn't always work out. Obviously, it hasn't worked out with some of the higher profile quarterbacks in the league across uh, uh, over the course of this season. And it's it's not a shocker that it doesn't happen sometimes. Sometimes it often doesn't happen with running backs. You, you think a running back and you could plug him in and he can go and he just doesn't have that success. It's dependent upon the offensive line, the scheme, the blocking, all of those things. I think it's tougher to project success with guys who are – at the at the tail end of their careers and then it is guys who are certainly uh younger coming off their first contract as it is to for some for some of these guys who are in their late 20s early 30s the eagles have pushed all the right buttons they've made all the yeah. right moves and and it it's looking like this is a, a team that's destined for Glendale, Arizona, and if anything less happens, it's going to be a huge major yeah. disappointment which is such a surprise to be able to this season. Like, you thought they were going to be good. I thought they were going to be good. I thought they were going to be division winners. But to sit here right now at 11-1 and one, as, to me, the prohibitive favorite to come out of the NFC, I know what the odds makers say, and, they, and they, they, there's the Bills, the Chiefs, and then you got the Cowboys in the mix. Eagles really look like a team with no flaws or very few flaws. They got to yeah. come out of the NFC. It, it, it has been amazing, and sometimes uh, the stars align. Look, Howie is going to win executive of the year. He should win executive of the year. Uh, Jody brought up some names. Add in Christian Kirk. You know, if they get Christian Kirk, they don't get A.J. Brown. If they get Marcus Williams, they don't get uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson. And you get mixed up in the moment and saying, oh, we lost out on Marcus Williams and – all of a sudden, you have the NFL interception leader. You lose out on a good player in Christian Kirk, and you turn in and get a great player in A.J. Brown. Sometimes the stars just align. But when I compare the Rams, Rob, the difference to me is the depth, as you mentioned, and why don't they have that depth? Because they got to pay the quarterback $40 million. The Eagles are paying their quarterback $1 million. Now, that's going to end. So that window – is open and it's not open a crack. It is wide open because they have such tremendous depth on this roster because you don't have to pay the quarterback. Now, how, so you bring up how disappointing would it be if the Eagles don't get the Glendale? Whew, it has changed quickly because they need to take advantage of this window. Oh, John, absolutely. And that's a great point you bring up because when you're paying a quick look at the Green Bay Packers, what you're paying Aaron Rodgers and how can you fill out the the rest of the roster? How are yeah. you able to assemble around these guys? The fact that Jalen Hurts is on a, a, a rookie contract, the second round pick rookie contract, you've been able to supplement, you've been able to build a roster around him. You can bring in Linville Joseph and sue uh in the middle of the season and and add guys you have this ability and uh, i think things have worked out for them i i i was messing around a couple of weeks ago wondering like who's the best draft pick in the history of howie roseman is it jordan maylotta is or is it J- jalen hurts at this point it 
to, to draft Jalen Hurts and we remember everything surrounding it, right? When he's yeah. comes out second yeah. round pick and you had Carson and all that. If Jalen Hurts is is going to lead you to a Super Bowl as a second round pick, that's the greatest draft pick in Howie Roseman history. Good, very well, Jordan. Pick. That's a good question, though, Rob, because Jordan as a seventh round pick yeah. who never put a helmet on in his life and <laughs> turns into a franchise left tackle. But quarterback is so important. You probably right. default to the quarterback, but man, it's a good question. That is a good question. Smells like a Rob Marty book after the season is over and done with. I'm just saying that <laughs> if that's uh, the way you're going. All right. I uh, do want to jump around and talk about the entire league w- w- while we got you. Um, Jimmy G goes down. They say broken foot, season ending surgery. Yesterday, come out and say, we well, might not need surgery. You could actually be back in six or seven weeks, which would be into the playoffs, but they got to get there before he ever comes back. Will things be pretty or ugly for the San Francisco 49ers? <laughs> oh, I see what next? you did there. <laughs> now, I, I'm not a writer. I got to go with the cute little catchphrase. I can't do a whole book like you two guys, so uh, I got to try and be cute when I can. Which way is the quarterback position go for San Francisco for the next six weeks? I think this team is is in a position where the defense is so solid. Their defense is so good, so strong. And they got a, a run game and a lot of weapons. I don't expect Brock Purdy to be as efficient as he was against Miami. To step in and do what he was able to do in that game was pretty impressive, having, that, ha, ha, having such little experience that this guy has as a rookie. But – I, they're in a position where they can grind out wins defensively, run the ball, and ask him not to do all that much. Uh, he's he's going to have to manage games just like Jimmy Garoppolo did. As far as Jimmy returning, you know, I, I think I remember the Eagles going through this with A.J. Feely stepping in after Donovan broke his foot um, in the Arizona game way back in 2002 3 It was maybe three or four games that A.J. Feely had to play, and then Donovan steps in. In the playoffs, they beat Atlanta, and then they lose to Tampa Bay, the Rondé Barber game. Uh, I don't know if the, the 49ers can expect Jimmy G to be able to step into an NFC championship if they get there uh, and, and be more effective than the guy who helped get them there. Uh, I think they got to just proceed as if Brock Purdy's their quarterback the rest of the season. Now they got a match up this week against Tampa Bay that – uh, you, you, you think you got an offense coming in in the Buccaneers that can't score more than 17 points, that's got no creativity, that relies solely dependent upon a 45-year-old quarterback making plays at the end of the game. It's a, it's a good shot and a good opportunity for them to a great test for the 49ers this week. And I think this game comes down to who avoids Dallas in the first round of the playoffs because the, the Bucks and the yeah. Niners are in that 3-4 mix. And, and you, you want to win that game to get the three. The four, if the Bucks win, they're still a game behind, but they'll have that home – they'll have that – the, the, the edge and the tiebreaker in case they, they do catch up. So nobody wants to play Dallas in the first round of the, of the playoffs. So that's why this game's a big one for both teams. Yeah, very talented team. You know, you mentioned the odds there, Rob, and you know how people in Philadelphia are. They get very upset that the Eagles aren't getting the respect of Kansas City or Buffalo or whomever is on top the of the AFC. on underdogs call them then. Yeah. Yeah, Zach. Zach's going to write another book. Uh, so, uh, even though they shouldn't, they haven't been underdogs all year. By the way, the Eagles—they're favored every game. They should be favored. Uh, they're favored this week as they go up to MetLife Stadium. But overall, you know, I think we all—and I think you were in this category. I think we talked about this in the off season. We all thought the AFC was going to be much better than the NFC. Turns out we were all wrong. I think. At this stage, you mentioned Dallas. To me, they're a tremendously talented team. San Francisco, if they had their quarterback, whether it was Trey Lance or or even Jimmy G, is, you know, maybe the most difficult team to deal with. Uh, the Eagles are the Eagles. Minnesota's 10-2. and two. They get no respect. We were just talking about Brian Dayball, what he's done with the Giants. The AFC people default to, but there's a bunch of teams that have underachieved. You know, the Chargers, I thought, were going to be a great team. 
Denver, we all thought, Russell Wilson, they're going to be a great team. The AFC West as a whole, we said, ooh, look at how tough that division is. Not tough at all. Bad division. Why do people can't admit they're wrong and say the NFC, <laughs> they got good teams. They got better teams than the AFC. They're deeper than the AFC. Am I crazy? No, I think the NFC East turned out to be what we all thought the AFC West would be. And here's the NFC East with, with four teams with a legitimate shot at making the playoffs. And, and we'll see uh, what happens with the Eagles and the Giants and the Commanders, because that's it's, it, I think the Giants are in a tougher spot right now than Washington, but they're going to face the Eagles the last game of the year. And the Eagles probably won't need that. So that they, that's a W for for the Giants. So that, that gets them to eight. Now they got to find a ninth and potentially a tenth in there. Um, he, he, the, the top heavy teams in the AFC, Buffalo, Kansas City, and Cincinnati are still really good. They're all, those three teams, Kansas City, Cincinnati, Buffalo, I, I think you can list them one, two, three, any which way uh, that you feel. And, and you're, not, you're not that far off, right? Th- this week, all right, Buffalo is now the one seed. Kansas City just lost. They lost to Cincinnati. Does that drop Kansas City to, to, to third? All three of those teams – have real shot, legitimate shot to win the Super Bowl. I, I think you you take those three from the AFC and then you go to the NFC. It's to me, it's Eagles, Dallas, and yeah, then I Minnesota, agree. right? Yeah. Eagles, Dallas, then Minnesota, and and Minnesota doesn't get a lot of respect for uh, it, it's they give up a thousand team. passing yards every week, but they yeah, turn a ten it and over. two team yeah. this week, a ten and two team. Versus a, versus a five and seven team, and they're an underdog. Detroit's favorite, yeah. Yeah, I, I know they're it, it's in Detroit, but they're an underdog. I don't know when that's ever happened this late in a season that you have a five game advantage in the win loss column, and you're an underdog. That tells you what Vegas thinks of, about the Lions. That makes it a Lions line to me. I'm taking the Lions in my pro picks now at this yeah. point. When when you see something like that, but that. That game means a lot to the Eagles because that allows them to build a bigger cushion for the number one seed. And then potentially those last two games don't matter. The Saints game where it only matters if you beat them. And if you do, that helps you in the draft pit, draft scenario and all that stuff. So that's going to be interesting going down this stretch. But I'll take those three teams out of AFC, two out of the NFC. And I'll say those are the five teams that I think could be in the Super Bowl. And, Gardner and, Minshew better be ready for week 17 because you're right. <laughs> the Eagles need that game against the Saints. They might not need it for 2022, but they may need it for the 2023 draft. All right, got to ask about this guy. And you're not as guilty as charged as other outlets like ESPN and Fox. We're three years for removed from Odell Beckham being a factor in the National Football League. And yet his free agents detour and how teams are back and forth and oh what a major addition it could be the cowboys at least let it leak out that you know he might not be able to play if you're wondering why we haven't scooped him up immediately he doesn't want to work out we've got questions medical issues and the like but it doesn't stop the conversation about odell beckham jr and or bring down the the buzz attached to it why is that it's been a while. I know he had a couple of good games helping the Rams to get to the Super Bowl last year. Got hurt in the Super Bowl itself. But why is Odell Beckham the most talked about guy in the National Football League? Star power. The name is OBJ. Uh, I, I think he's one of the uh, the Instagram celebrities who commands the most. Uh, you get those. You get those surveys that they send out there and go, which players get the most hits and which players can make the most money. But, Jody, you're right. And I think you know, every throughout this process, I've wondered when a guy tore his ACL in February, yeah. could he possibly be ready right now? Like uh, I saw Chris Godwin go down with an ACL in December last year for the for the Buccaneers and he made it back for early in the season in, in September, but he hasn't been himself until mm-hmm. the past couple weeks. And I don't anticipate Odell Beckham Jr. being able to contribute in any significant way when he first comes back. The only guy we ever saw come back from an ACL and, and be immediately who he what was, Adrian Peterson, remember that? Adrian, Tore his ACL, yeah. came back, Maybe. was the MVP of the league, ran for 2,000 yeah. yards. Normally it takes a guy uh, till the next year. It, 
it's it's a three, four, five month recovery process after you're playing. You know, it's nine to twelve months. Then you come back, and it's still three, four till you feel like who you who you are. Interesting yeah. that it's the Cowboys who leak that information. Are they leaking that to maybe set one? They could be doing that to to get him at a, a, a certainly a lower contract or two. Hey guys, hey Dak, hey Z, K. Hey, we know you guys want o- o- Odell. He's not healthy, and it, we we can't make this happen right now. So th- it, it's very interesting that the leaky mouth comes from Jerry Jones. I'm not surprised. I give you one. I give you one other possibility. Jerry doesn't like to be second guessed. Jerry is the. Uh, it's got the most rabbit ears uh, of any NFL owner. And whoa, whoa, we're the Cowboys. <laughs> Odell's come to. T- How do we not have this guy signed? Jerry doesn't like to hear that through the media, through the fans, or whatever else. He's very sensitive. He can't play. He can't get on the field. It's not that we're not willing. We know we want him to, but I'm not doing that. It's a bad football yeah. deal. Jerry, Jerry can get defensive pretty damn quickly. I think that's part of it. And by the way, uh, OBJ would be a better fit for the Giants. I mean, they need a receiver. So when he's oh healthy, God, but tonight. yeah, <laughs> Michael Gallup, they went through it with Michael Gallup. He's coming back off a torn ACL. Now he's just getting right and he's actually contributing a little bit. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. But Rob, you're right with the OBJ. It's just the superstar talk. Now, I, I want to talk about the superstar here in Philadelphia, and people don't want to label him that. Um, second consecutive uh, Player of the Week award uh, announced this morning for Jalen Hurts. Um, this is the MVP of the league, in my estimation. Now, it's not over. Uh, there's still plenty of time left. Uh, that could change. I don't get the feeling, and obviously you're involved, and I don't want you to – uh, go too deep into it from that perspective, but uh, I don't get the feeling there's a lot of, of of push for Jalen Hurts. A lot of people who say this is an MVP caliber guy. Patrick Mahomes, we all know Patrick Mahomes. Josh Allen, we all know Josh Allen. But do you sense that people don't believe in Jalen Hurts? Because I sense that. Uh, he certainly had. He doesn't have Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen's uh, resume coming into the season, and I, I think people are aware of that. They know that they didn't consider him to be an MVP candidate coming into the year, but he's put people on notice, John. And uh, you know my role in that is I don't vote, but I, I yeah. have assigned the voters, and for most of, for the voters knowing that I'm from Philly originally. They a few guys have reached out to me over the course of the season. Hey, you know, Jalen Hurts is, is really like he, he's 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 right there. And I think this past week when Burrow beats Mahomes and Jalen for the second consecutive week does what he did. You know, one week it's with his legs this week for a team to go over 350 rushing and then 350 passing. It's so impressive. It's so significant. He doesn't make mistakes. He's so protective of the football. He makes smart decisions. He's a winning player. And we've always talked about the intangibles and the characteristics and all those things that he brings to the table. And now it translates on the field. Uh, I don't vote, but if I had one right now, he's my MVP. Right now, Jalen Hurts would be my MVP. But this is a this is a, a award that right it's going week to week yep. because you look at it. Next next week, we could be sitting here going, yeah. oh, did you see the way uh, Burrow did this or Mahomes did that or Allen did that? It's going to come down to who finishes. I think you have to give a team credit for getting that number one seed. But where I, I do feel that maybe some of these other guys have an edge is Jalen has so many weapons around him, and he's got a dominant offensive line. I joked about this a couple weeks ago and said, if ever a unit were to be considered – for an MVP, it would be the entire Eagles offensive line, to which one guy said to me, a, a voter, he was like, has has a, an offensive lineman ever? And I'm like, never won. I, I don't, I can't, I got to dig in and see if they ever got a vote, but it was always one vote. Now that we expanded it to give me a top five, could somebody get a vote as an offensive line? Could Jason Kelsey get a vote? Like, I think the, 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 
the depth of the team, the weapons around him, and the strength of the offensive line may factor a little bit against Jalen because some voters may feel like Patrick Mahomes does more with less. And I don't think that's fair. I, I, I understand where it comes from. Uh, but if you're going to go quarterback, base it on the totality of what he's been able to do all year. And, yeah, he may have some more weapons. Yes, he may have the best offensive line in football, but he's going out there producing week in and week out, and he's doing it with his legs. He's doing it with his arm. He's not making mistakes. To me, he's the MVP right now. And, Rob, since we went down the award-winning road, and you did a great job of explaining it, and I have to say this all the time. It is a week. To, it's a fluid situation. Just because you call Patrick Mahomes the MVP two weeks ago doesn't mean he's the MVP now. Just because John and I both said this week we vote for Jalen Hurts doesn't mean in two weeks we're going to say the same thing. It's that close. There's no runaway leader that it can go week to week. Who's the coach of the year in the NFL right now? It hands down to me, Nick Sirianni. When you got one loss in your second season as a head coach, for a team that is coming off a nine and nine season. And I know you, uh, same argument with Jalen Hurts. Yeah, you got more playmakers, you got more talent, you got the uh, executive of the year, which isn't an official AP award, but I know yeah. Uh, there, yeah. th there are other outlets who, who do give out an executive of the year, but that's certainly Howie. Uh, I'm not holding that against Nick Sirianni. If they, if they rattle off uh, a 15 and two season here or some 16 and one, whatever it may be, he's got to be the, the, the coach of the year. And, and, I thought – I'm sure you guys thought it was a, 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 a disgrace in baseball to see Buck Showalter get manager of the year in the National League when his team folded and couldn't even win the division. Like I, I, I certainly think that the, uh, the NFL voters – um, are, are going to recognize. And, you know, you, you had Brian Dable in the conversation, then they start losing a few games. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, Mike McDaniel's got to be in the conversation. Kyle Shanahan's going to get a look because he's now on his third quarterback, and we'll see how they finish. But he, Nick Sir, uh, and, and he, he's got one loss. Uh, you know, he's got to be that. He's got to be that. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's almost it, – it's like an interesting experiment because – you know, if you go back to the preseason, Rob, and we said, oh, Nick's going to be 11-1, and one. people say, coach of the year, bang, no question. The expectations weren't there. But now as we go through the season, now the expectations have changed. The Eagles are expected to win every week. The Eagles are expected, um, uh, are favored every week. And all of a sudden, you start looking at the guys like Dayball who are doing more with less perception-wise Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and so it's always interesting to see how people vote, and it comes down to everybody's definition. But you know, I I wanted to give you a chance. I saw this on your uh, Twitter account. Uh, follow Rob at, uh, at Rob Motti. You got a chance to take your daughters to see the goats. Is that uh, yeah? They're not Eagles fans. Wait, they 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 they, they mm -hmm. have departed to Tom Brady. I can't blame them, by the way. Yeah, well, they they never they never were right. They, they were so young in Philly, they didn't really care about sports. And then it, it went, when they started to get into it here in, in Tampa, and you know Brady being Brady, and, and they get excited about uh, seeing him. They've been wanting to go to a game, and and I can't. How am I going to take yeah. them to a game when I'm working? Yeah. So I haven't been yeah. able to do it. So I, I thought this Monday, like, I flew home from Houston. I, I had that the, the the privilege of covering the worst game on the schedule, the Browns Texans. <laughs> And, and it wasn't. I wasn't there for the game. Obviously, I was there for the Deshaun Watson return yeah, and all right. that nonsense. And uh, I fly home early on, on Monday. It's my birthday. It's my first one since uh, losing my dad. And I'm like, I, I want to do something special with my girls. So I thought, all right, let's do it. It's a Monday night game. I don't have to watch the whole league today. It's just one game. I I, I can take them. So so uh, we, yeah, man, I haven't bought tickets for a football game. In, 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 in forever, I know what tickets cost. <laughs> I'm, God, I'm on the secondary. Yeah. I want to, like, yeah, I didn't want to dial up any. It's like last minute. I'm gonna say, hey, can I, can I buy some tickets to it? Yeah. So I'm like, on this site, on that site, you pay the pay whatever ridiculous amount. We're sitting there, and I'm going. This is a terrible football game. It's a, and they're having a great it time. Was. The Bucks fans are embracing yeah. them. Everybody. And then we stay till the end. I'm like, you got to stay. We stay till the end. Brady, Tom nice. Brady, you never know what he can do. Yeah, and, they, they, and they got to see history with all Tom Brady's yeah. accolades and all that. He he had only come back from that type of deficit that late 
once, and that was the Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Yeah. against Atlanta, and he does it again at your daughter's first game live. That's 44th, cool. 44th fourth quarter comeback to pass Peyton Manning. Yeah. So he, he 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 broke the record for fourth quarter comebacks, and it, and it was beautiful. I had seats as he's running off, and you could see you could see them cheering on the ESPN uh, uh, screen as as Brady's running off. So it, nice. they'll never forget their first game. The problem is, guys, now they want to go back. Oh, uh, ooh, yeah. I don't know what you're kind of buddy. Kind of but, but right. the yeah. best, now that you've been best bitten. words you can ever hear, better than Disney. They said, "Ooh, wow. very nice. Better than Disney." So right, I'll well, take that. Go, glad that worked out for you. But now that you've admitted to bad parenting and you're allowing <laughs> your daughters to be Buccaneer fans, hmm. I'm bringing you back here to Philadelphia. Before you became Mr. National Associated Press, you were an Eagle guy forever. Best Eagles Giant game you ever covered? Uh, I'm not gonna, I, I can't remember covered, but I can remember a, as a kid growing up as a fan, the Clyde Simmons, f- the, the field goal that was blocked in overtime that Clyde said, I've, I've never seen this before in the end. It was the only game. It was overtime. I think it was in the Meadowlands, a uh, blocked field goal, a, a blocked field goal in overtime. And it goes behind the line of scrimmage. Clyde Simmons, who's a defensive end, but he's playing, he's on the offensive line, picks it up and runs it in for a touchdown. And we were like going, what in the world? Merrill and I think it was Stan Walters at the time was his play-by-play guy are going crazy. I I just remember going back, uh, Jody, you probably were on WIP at the time uh, back then. And and like just, I, I used to tape, like on a cassette player, Merrill's calls and play the and, and they'd be like the answering machine, the voice of the answering machine at my parents' house. People will call like, <laughs> Merrill going nuts on a Clyde Simmons. Oh, by the way, you've reached the, 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 the Mahdi's aren't home right now. So that to me is the most that's the most memorable. Uh, uh the, the, obviously the Deshaun game, right? Deshaun, the last punt, uh, the Westbrook punt return, uh Vicica Hemma beating up the goalpost. Uh, Randall Cunningham, the Monday night game. that Carl was, Banks, uh, yeah. The Jimmy Giles play, right, where yeah. that sticks out. But I don't think there's ever been a, a wackier ending than a defensive lineman playing offensive line in overtime, picking up a blocked field goal. I don't think people even know that rule, that you can pick up yeah. a blocked field goal if it goes behind the line of scrimmage and run with right. it. Yeah. And By the way, Jordan up- Davis, before his injury, was uh, was the wing guy on field goal yeah. protect still going wow. on today? Yeah, yeah, we shall see. Mighty man, uh, you just admitted that uh, your parents were better parents than you become <laughs> because they put Merrill Weiss <laughs> on the answering machine. You're bringing your daughters to Buccaneer game, but we love you and we forgive you. And uh, get get them up here to a Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles game. The Eagles are 11 and yeah. 1, in case you hadn't noticed. Uh, it's spring a little bit. You might have paid a lot on the secondary market for those tickets this week, but it's worth it to go to an Eagles. Well, I think I got some well, connections in Philly. We can make that happen. 12 is 12. You can't fight that title wave. I understand exactly what's going on, Rob. You hey, can't. I'll take them to Glendale when the Eagles get there. There, there go. you go. Very there good go. attitude out of you. Rob, uh, always a pleasure. We'll get you back up before the playoffs start. Thanks for jumping into this. Thanks, Rob. guys. Take care. That's Rob Motti, uh, the lead writer for the Associated <laughs> Press for the National Football League, but forever a Philadelphia. Yeah, Eagles you can't guy. fight Tom Brady with young daughters. I mean, there's no, there's nothing you can do. That's not, you know, there's yeah. nothing you can do. I guess once you go there, you can't come back down that road. And they did get a good ending to a game for their first ever football game. I, John McMahon, I'm Jody McDonald. We're your Mac and Mac Birds.